There we go. Hello. <laughs> Someone pushed the wrong button and I flashed my face up on the screen for a little microsecond there uh, like that. Uh, good job. You Completely your, wrong button. Good job you put your clothes on. Yes. And you, you wouldn't think I've done this before. I shouldn't be making these mistakes. Anyway, good evening, everybody. It is Sunday once again. I probably, I don't know. My head's a mess this week. Uh, if you've never seen us before and you have no idea who we are, my name is James and I have had an electrifying experience five minutes ago. Ah, and my name's Mark, and I'm keen to find out what that experience was. Uh, I got an electric shock off my Mac. Oh, was that it? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> You're always getting electric shocks. <laughs> it drives me absolutely place. nuts. But yeah. I haven't had any electric shocks for about three months. So I went for, for a period of getting shocks off of everything, even non-metallic things. Like wraps. Like potatoes. Burritos. And burritos. And this this happened for like six months straight, maybe a year, because... You would hear every now and then you'd be sitting next door and you'd hear ah because I'd get a massive electric shock and then it stopped and then this evening it started again. I touched my laptop, quality engineering got a shock. Anyway, here we are. <laughs> that was my electrifying experience. It's static, don't you know? Where's yes. it coming from though? Because I don't know. I've got a particular pair of shoes I wear where it happens. So if I shut the gate, but the, the difference between me and you is I'll go. To, oh, I just got a. Static shock, whereas you're like, ah! And we have to get the defibrillator out. And <laughs> Call the ambulance. All kinds of other stuff. I was in hospital for a week. But it's, it's not like I've got new shoes, because I've been wearing the same ones for ages, because I don't really bother buying new shoes. M- must be atmospherics. It must be. If Maybe anyone, it's floppy. Could be. Uh, if anyone knows the answer, please please chime in in the comments. Yes. Anyway, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, we are here to answer your modularly upgradable questions. And I did put on the Discord just now that we're also happy to upgrade your cats. Really? I don't know, are we? Oh, we should be. To what? I don't know, RoboCats? <laughs> no, that's invasive. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like the idea of RoboCats. Just imagine cats. Floppy with some kind of uh, exoskeleton Robo-cop going on. Suit. No, definitely not. We'll stick to the furry. Natural ske- natural exoskeleton. Exoskeleton. Skeleton. We've had a super chat thingy, whatever they're called, from Cos Billingham. Thank you, Cos. <laughs> Very much. Mum 20 powered by potato energy. <laughs> Hell I like yeah. The, I like the idea of that. Hell yeah. I yep. mean, we have come up with some silly speaker ideas in our time already. Um, there have been lots of questionable design choices, mostly by me. Yes. Like, hmm, we could have this one covered in AstroTurf. Yes. Um, but yeah, so we're here this evening to answer your questions about speakerage and other stuff. Other stuff. If you want to ask us about Flopcat, go for it. Um, but yeah, so let's start off quickly with for th- for those of you who maybe don't have a clue what we're talking about, why we're even here. Not that I imagine that's the case if you're watching this live stream, but just in case, I think most people probably know who we are and what we're doing by now. Short description. But anyway, we have speakers. Yes. Long description. Uh, we have, at the moment, two models of speaker out in the world. The Mum 6 and the Mum 8. The Mum 6 is a little baby two-way monitor. A little diddy boy. And the Mum 8 is a... Big three-way boy. A big three-way boy. And the idea is you can modularly upgrade them as your budget or your needs increase. How can you do that? So at the moment, you can swap out the mid and the tweeter on the Mum 8, and soon the tweeter on the Mum 6, when we've got that ready. And you'll be able to basically swap them out for different materials for added detail, better dynamics, better transients, that kind of thing. Uh, And it's constantly improving all the time, isn't it? As the new discovery we've just heard from Belizma. Yeah, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about that yet, but we'll briefly mention that. So we we tried the... um diamond tweeters towards the end of last year as many of you may remember which aren't cheap we still don't know what the exact pricing will be um <clears throat> but it will basically double the price at least of a pair of mum sixes they're not cheap it will be quite expensive um we've had news from Stanislav this week that he's developing a diamond mid dome a three inch diamond mid dome wow hell yeah so goodness i mean the brilliant <laughs> sounds ridiculous so goodness know how that's gonna sound so that might be an option we're, we're, we're wondering what to do with the mum 10 because there will be a mum 10 on the way because purify coming out with a 10 inch base driver or have developed a 10 inch base driver we're just waiting for the first pair mm-hmm. to come through and we want to do something a bit special 
with the Mum 10 because on paper it's not different enough to the Mum 8. I don't think particularly fat it gives you a little bit more SPL and a little bit more low end, but the Mum 8 goes down to 26 hertz at minus 3 anyway, so it's not like we need more low end from that. Mm. Um, so I think something special for the Mum 10, and it might be diamond mm. mid-domes and tweezers. I'm really excited. I can't wait to try those. For sure. Yeah. That is super exciting. Yes. So, yeah, the Mum 10 will be happening soon. We're just waiting for some big woofy boys, some big yeah. woofers. and we've got to prototype the cabinets and stuff like yeah. that. But we've got to get the existing orders out of the door, exactly. first of all, which is ramping up. Yes, it is indeed. So pace. Within the last week, we've been shipping the first of the Mum 6 monitors. Yep. So we took pre-orders for those a couple of months ago, and those are now ready. They're out. Um, and one chap who has just received his mum sixes yesterday was it yesterday day before it was day before Friday. Honestly, i don't know where the days it are going friday is trevor who's just said shh yes trevor shush, <laughs> uh, trevor shush is watching the live stream and he has just received his mumsies mum sixes. Like that. i hope he doesn't mind me sharing the photo uh so he has got his mum sixes all set up in his studio which is very exciting. It's yeah. really, really cool to see those going out into the world. Yeah. Um, because we've had quite a few excited uh, buyers waiting for them. Um, and the feedback we've been having so far is all positive. We've had, you know, good feedback on their sound so far from the, the few pairs that we've we've already sent out. And, yeah, feeling confident in the... The next batch to go. Yeah, and the feedback's been consistent with the feedback we've had from the Mum 8 as well. So it's been all about translation um, and hearing things you've never heard before, mm. um, in, even in your own mixes. Um, but the key thing is translation. They, mm. they translate really well, and that's what it's all about. If something mm. only sounds any good on your monitors in your studio, then it's, you know... You need to make some changes to get it out into the world to, to be compatible with as many different systems as possible. Mm. So it's all about translation, really. Um, <laughs> uh, Trevor said, I've had my ears bleeding from them today. They're amazing. I'm not sure if that's a compliment. <laughs> I guess you've I been, would hope it is. I guess you've been doing some loud, some loud stuff. Loud stuff is good. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're, we're going to tackle some of the questions that are coming in. Feel free to send in all your questions about speakers and we'll, we'll see what we can answer. So... Uh, First one, what are the dimensions roughly on the Mum 6s? From memory, I believe they're 23 centimetres high, 20 wide, and about 20-ish deep. Can't remember the exact numbers. Mm, I think but they're a bit higher than, a bit taller than that. Actually, tell you we what. We should, should what have I'll one do, here, really, shouldn't we? Then I could do you know what I was going to say to you before we started this stream? Shall we get one? Um, nah, that'd be no, silly that'd idea. be a silly idea. Why would we do that? Give us two seconds. I'll get you, the dimensions on my you phone. You look that up while you're there. I'll answer a couple more questions. Uh, Martin says, is there still time left for studio duties? Uh, no, uh, yes, kind of. But I'm, we're really kind of narrowing that down now to uh, very limited production work, so only really projects that we want to do. Um, I'm still doing stereo mastering for lots of labels and lots of you as well, which is good. No plans to stop that. And obviously we're getting heavily into Atmos as well. So um, at the moment I've kind of got uh, two full-time jobs and one part-time job. The first part-time job is coming uh, come first thing in the morning, do all the mastering when my ears are fresh early in the morning. That's when I like to do it. If it's still dark, great. Um, and <laughs> so then mad. I'm normally in the workshop by nine um, and then it's, catching up on all the orders, getting everything done regarding speaker building and shipping and all that stuff in there. And then about six o'clock, I'll come back into the studio um, and work normally through till about 11 in the evening uh, on Atmos stuff. And if I haven't got anything to do for clients, then I'm just going back over old projects we've done um, mm. and just, just getting as many hours in, as much practice in on that as I can and trying to work out the best kind of workflows and what does work and what doesn't work and all that stuff. So yeah, studio stuff's still going on, uh, but it's long days at the moment, but mm. I don't care. I love that. Yes. And we'll come to why it's been even longer days in a moment. Yes. Uh, let me just answer that question about the dimensions because I've very handily found it on my phone. Well uh, it was 35 centimeters high, ah. 20 wide, 23 and a half deep. So I just got the numbers mixed up. What's that in miles? 0. 0.000 no idea so yes uh 35 by 20 by 23 are the dimensions so they're of quite the diddy. six they're quite diddy 
They're about that. This is completely useless on because you've got no scale reference at all. They're about that, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, quite about that. What we should have done is get one of the ones out of the workshop. And yeah, we should, we should have done, really. Never mind. Um, oh, well, that would be well prepared. We if you turned your laptop on its side, they're, kind, about of, the they're, size kind, of, of they're kind of not really anything like that. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, does the Mum 6 come in orange? Yeah, so we intend on offering or at least I intend on offering the Mum 6 in all the colours you can get a Mum 8 in, because mm-hmm. I don't see why you wouldn't. No, exactly. Um, so, yes, if you want a pair of Mum 6s in orange, go for it. Uh, the all green, Our first all pair of um, orange Mum 8s shipped on Friday, and that's kind of in the process of being on the way to Holland. I believe it's fully due to arrive tomorrow. Yeah, I think one's um, arrived and one got stuck in customs for some bizarre reason. But yeah, I must admit, though, that's, that's a bit of an outlier. So most of the shipments that we've done to Europe have arrived within one day, um, all in one one kind of shipment. So that's all good. Um, so, yeah, really excited to see those set up. And Yella has said that he's going to share some photos of those when they're all done. So Excellent. we can take a look, which I'm super excited about. That's exciting. Um Right, Cos Billingham says, will the 10-inch dome make its way to the separate sub? Wondering whether to get a pair of 8s uh, or the Mum 6 and subs, would it make sense to go for a 10-inch sub if it was available? Now, I don't see why we wouldn't offer a 10 as a sub. Yep. Um, I think it would make sense to have matching size subs for each size of speaker. So we've yeah, already got the 6 could... and a sub version, 8 and a sub version you know, in the works. Yeah, I think we're going to have a 6 and an 8 and a 10 of, sure. of, of each. Um, yeah, we're still... We're still um, we're trying lots of things with the sub design. So as far as the mm. obviously six six and a half inch drivers and eight inch drivers we've had for a while, um, tried various incarnations of of ported design for a sub. Didn't like it. Tried transmission line for a sub. Did like it sonically, although it's still not quite as tight. It's a bit and of a nightmare tra- to design tra- and tra- build trans- as well. Transient, transient response is not as good as it is with a sealed enclosure. And for the six and a half inch version, it was 80 centimetres deep. <laughs> so that is a big <laughs> boy. So if you've got a studio um, like most of our Mum 6 customers have, like sure. Trevor, um, sure. then uh, put in an 80 centimetre deep uh, metre high box in your room mm. is not really a practical proposition and the same with Shane as well um, so the only thing we haven't tried which is next on the list is a passive radiator version so basically I mean yes. we could go with a sealed version but you're going to be a little bit limited on SPL mm. um, well, from, I'm quite excited that. about the passive radiator design because the specs at least on paper on the purify drivers look pretty incredible yeah for the passive radiator one like the eight inch passive radiator system so for those that don't know it's one powered woofer and two passively driven uh woofers so you've got three in total the the low resonant frequency of that system is 14 hertz on an eight inch driver yeah which is pretty nuts and again perfect for super low end sub so i think that's that's so that that's the next thing uh once we've caught up with the existing orders which is an ongoing thing which is laden with problems every step of the way which i won't moan on about but you'd think it would be easy wouldn't you just order some parts they come in Mm. build cabinets but no well having said that that makes it sound like a disaster which is not the case yeah no but it's yeah there's yeah uh it's just uh welcome to the world of manufacturing as i think audience said a couple couple of weeks ago but thankfully i think we're pretty much there with everything that we need other than amp metal work now yeah which is on the way and that'll be here in three weeks Maybe we less. Ordered, yeah, we ordered it over a week ago, so a couple of weeks for that. And then we'll be ahead of the game, so we'll have stuff in stock as well, which mm. is what we've been trying really hard to do, although we've had loads of orders again this week. So so, <laughs> so we won't be. We'll, that, yes. That'll all be going out really quickly. Um, and so why might we have had orders, Mark? What's happened this week? Uh, what's happened this week is this little thing here came out. Um, the sound um, on sound, or magazine, or snood on snood, as we like, we like to call it. We always call it snood on snood. snood, on snood. Um, yeah, sound on sound. Pick this up from your local news agents if you haven't already. Um, easily, very easy to spot. One because it's got sound on sound on the top, uh, and two because it's very orange. And there's Hans Zimmer's lovely face right in the middle of the cover. Um, so yeah, we had Phil Ward's review published in that. This week, which was very exciting, um, only really one negative 
mm. that he came up with, which he wasn't, he said in the review himself, he wasn't that bothered about. Um, and that's the, some slight uneven uh, unevenness in the frequency response. Sure. Um, which we are going to take steps to investigate mm-hmm. and and address sure. for people that want it. That was in the silk. He had the silk variant. He hasn't reviewed or tested the beryllium. Maybe we'll do. Yep. So at some point down the line, and I think the diamond as well are going to have to be. Yeah, for sure. And that, I think in terms of fixing the problem, I would imagine it would be relatively easy to fix in terms of just like a bit more DSP work. Yeah, in which just case, a DSP it would, if that is the case, which I'm hoping it will be, uh, it will be just a free update to everyone that's already got a pair of speakers. So it will not cost anyone anything extra to get their yeah, speakers that's, that's, updated. That's why it's the modular upgradable monitor although we have already done one dsp upgrade yeah um and some of the people just like the original one so much that they actually went exactly. back to the older, so we'll give you the option to basically the older, to the older version yeah and of course they can be individually tweaked to the room as well because there's eq and all that stuff built mm. in um but the main problem is with the measurements because um unless you've got access to a large anechoic chamber and even the largest one in the UK, which is at the University of Southampton, even that's only flat down to 100 hertz. So below yeah. 100 hertz, you still haven't really got a clue what's going on. Although um, from the, the testing that Phil did and the testing that we've done, I think the base end is actually pretty even. It's, it's yeah. not so bad. It yeah. was just that little kind of hashing variation happening around the high mids yeah, to but the, we've, the treble uh, region. But we've measured that here in in this room, in my room, in the yep. workshop, outside, and yep. that hasn't been there. Mm-hmm. So, so just to clarify, we aren't measuring the tonality of the room included in that. There are steps taken to kind of emit the room as much as mm-hmm. possible. Which is why we um, do lots of different rooms and see if we get the same results. Yes, uh, as well as close miking and all the techniques that are actually kind of yep. meant for that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, we're taking steps to kind of improve that. And as I said, it will be a case of when we get to get around to fixing that, which hopefully will be pretty soon. Uh, yeah, we can push that update out to everyone and there we go. Modular upgradable mittens. It's exactly Christmas mittens. So, uh, yeah, so basically we need a, we need a cliff or near field scanner, I think. So if yes. anyone's got about 120,000 quid spare and they'd like to donate one. So a lot of people fantastic. actually in the comments of the video that went out on Thursday as well, where we kind of officially announced the speakers that we've already been selling for over a year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of comments saying that we should send a pair to Erin from Erin's Audio Corner, the YouTube channel. Uh, we have been talking to Erin about this kind of thing, but there is a choice to be made. So he can either... Help us with the consultation by using his Clipple device to measure and help us improve what we've already got, but at the cost of not doing a review. Or he can do a review but not do the consultation. So we're just deciding what would be the best case for us, which I would yeah. imagine would be the consultation. Well, the best, case, the best case for us would be that, and we have been talking to him about this, would be the consultation. But if he was half an hour down the road, yeah, he's not exactly he's local. Not. He's 4,000 miles away, and that's the big problem because we want to be able to take the speakers to an independent third party, mm. get the measurements done, look at what we can improve, and then improve it and measure it again. And obviously we can't do that unless we fly out to sure. wherever Erin is with a, with a pair of speakers, which makes it very expensive. Um, I can't find anyone with a near field scanner in the uk i don't i don't know if yeah, there is one in the uk so or not to find. uh we have approached clipple as well because obviously going to dresden is easier than sure going to to wherever in america um so yeah we're just looking at the different options at the moment and, mm. but um, either way is something we are looking into yeah um heavily because I mean, I was, I was pretty happy with the review in Sound on Sound overall. I oh, think yeah, it's a great review. Sure. Yeah. Um, and the only negative, if we can call it that, was the tonality thing, which can be addressed. So That's I'm really happy yeah. happy to kind of work on we that and push the, it closer towards being a, a great monitor. Yeah, we got the cabinet right. The cabinet's not resonating or yeah. ringing. Um, basically, we got... Uh, well, I think Phil says at the end, we got... Let me, let me find it and quote it. Um, he says at the end... Uh, I think I've memorised it. I've read the review so many times. <laughs> I've point. only read it twice. I've been good. Next page. Um, oh, that is it. Da, 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 da. 
Yeah, so he just performed a basic EQ, like 2 dB here and there, um, and says, that left me with a more comfortable tonal balance, but cost none of the mum's fundamental quality. And it's that phrase, fundamental quality, that sums up the mum 8 for me. Take three of the best drivers available, put them in a well-engineered, rigid enclosure, drive them with a powerful and high-quality amplification system, and you get the mum 8. Um, I've just made it sound really simple, but in reality, it takes huge commitment, hard work, Oh, yes. And not a little skill. Hmm, don't know about that. Um, Mark and James ought to feel very proud of what they've achieved, Yay. which is very nice. So, yeah, so fundamentally, it's it's right. It's just that, yeah, sure. just some little, little changes which are easily done uh, and which we can do. So that's because we've designed it to, mm. to be able to do that. So For sure. So I um, actually got a question the other day saying, has anyone actually done the upgrade thing? Like, as in, has anyone actually proven the theory that it works? And the answer is yes. Oh, yeah. Um, we've yeah. had uh, quite a few people, actually, that have gone from the silk base model up to beryllium, mm. which is our current highest tier that we offer. Um, and it was a pretty painless experience, to be honest. Um, it's been... There have been some people that have been abroad, so I remotely log in and do all the, the voodoo and update their DSP. But likewise, we've had people that are pretty local to us, like Anthony, who have, well, not local, but in the same country, yep. who have come to us <laughs> and uh, we've done it here in our workshop. So yeah. it's a pretty painless process. Yeah, in, um, terms of, in terms of what DIY skills are needed, if you can turn a screwdriver, mm. um, you can do it. It's literally undoing three screws on the tweeter, um, six screws on the mid driver, mm. um, pulling off the... Spade connectors. spade connectors, which are uh, spade connectors, you don't even need to be able to solder. Um, even I could do it. They're quite tight, so that can take a bit of... Sure. Um, yeah, putting the new ones in, screwing them in, mm. away you go. Uh, the Naked Noise Boy, I love that username, cool. uh, said, I got dragged out of WH Smith today by my wife for reading your article in Sound on Sound <laughs> as she needed a new handbag and the shops were oh, shutting. Oh, boring. I'll go back tomorrow to finish reading it. You should have just taken photos of it. Yeah, you could have done. Or yeah. even or better. Or you just buy one. Well, uh, uh, yeah, you could do that. But also, <laughs> if you want to, want to finish reading it tonight, Sound on Sound have very kindly made our review the free article for the month. So yes. You can read it for free. You don't need a, yep. an SOS subscription. Yeah, and thank you to Ian as well, Ian Gilby, if yes. you're watching, for making that happen. That is super kind of you. What a dude. Uh, and we love you guys loads and can't wait to see you again at GearFest in July. I'm really excited for GearFest. Yeah, I'm quite excited for GearFest um, as well. It was fun last year, but yeah. I think now that more people know about the mums, I think it might be even crazier. I think we should have lots of mum sixes in different colours. Yes, well, talking of different colours, well. actually, so Hellcat, uh, commented a second ago can i get a pair of mums now i've not really thought of this can i get a pair of mums in orange and black yep. like different colors on different panels yep i think that's a really cool idea it yes, really yeah, wouldn't be that a, difficult it's want, the same as have, building a normal cabinet you could have every panel a different color yeah it, you could have a red top a green side a blue side <laughs> uh bottom it doesn't really matter does it um an orange front and a gray back if you wanted to maybe we'll actually sell that the, as an option the, the mondrian edition yeah, that yeah. could be that could be technical cool. mums yeah um and we will at some point do the swirly dippy boy which is the, the no, hydro we, no we probably no, won't we won't because <laughs> um, that's paint and paint is bad that's so true. we won't do that that's true. Uh, there's a few questions as well that came in a couple of people that can't be on the stream and wanted us to answer them so as they can get the answers when they watch them back well i think we've answered them in person anyway sure um lots of people interested in atmos systems this week particularly with the mum six and one question a few people have asked is can the mum six amplifiers be rack mountable for atmos use so um the mum eight amps are on the back of the mum eights but you can take them off and put them in a 19 inch rack yeah whereas the mum six has a traditional style plate amplifier in the back um, so to answer the question, can the MUM6 amps be rack mountable? Yes, they can. So we can do that as a special order, as well as lots of other things as a special order, like multicoloured, different panelled cabinets. Um, and you can have your amps in a rack um, for the MUM6 as well. And then if you wanted to, if you're short on space, we could actually make the MUM6, the MUM uh, we could do some custom cabinets and make them about 60 mil mm -hmm. or a couple of inches shallower so there's you've got more room to to play with that and it'd also be easier to mount as well because you haven't got the amp in the back so you can you'll be able to screw through any kind of sort of bracket etc onto that 
So yes, we can do that, um, and we can also do completely custom designs as well, which um, yes. James has got a photo. So this was an original incarnation when we had the Dayton. Oh yeah, this one. Um, yeah. Base drivers, but um, so these were made for a living room um, to go either side of a flat screen TV on the wall, and they're only a hundred mil or four inches deep. I don't know if you've got a photo there showing the depth. There we go. Skinny so they're, they're really shallow, um, so they can go right up against the wall. The They're at the right height for sitting down and listening. They're in a sort of floor stander style cabinet. And there's an example of the multicolour as well. So they're 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 black and light grey. Mm. Um, Which I think looks really nice, actually. I've seen them set up and they, they, they look, look very amazing. Nice. Yeah, they look, they look, they look, they've got a bit of an 80s Bang & Olufsen vibe mm. to them. Um, but, yeah, so we can do lots of custom stuff like that as well. It's not just, you know, this isn't we're not like we're not a company that are getting all these outsourced and manufactured in the far east or whatever we're making them here so we can do we can do custom things like that as yeah. well uh so mark krauth who sorry if i've said your name wrong uh who has just commented is considering buying a pair of mums and uh he said is it modifiable uh, sorry the logo is it modifiable via the dsp so the D- the logo has to be go and get the cat immediately the logo has to be set into the dsp when we build the speakers because there are a set of tools that basically only we have access to oh has he bu- has he caught a mouse yes stay out there floppy um yeah so the the logo has to be set when you buy the speakers um there may be a point at which i can change that later but for now we we ask that it's set when you buy the speakers um, because I set up the DSP all in a very specific audio, uh, uh, order. Audio. Audio. And yeah, there we go. So that yeah. is the answer of that one. Uh, what's the price of the MUM 6? So the, uh, the MUM 6 base model, which is currently the only one available, is £2,995, 2995 Yep, including the old tax. Yeah, including tax. There's an interesting question which gets asked to me all the time by people buying outside the UK, which surprisingly is most of our customers. We actually sell many more outside the UK mm, than in, in yeah. um, regarding tax, so how that works. Now, so what we do is because we are VAT registered, we take the VAT off of the purchase when you buy it outside of the UK. So let's say a pair of Mum 6s at 2995 when you buy them up, you buy them. You pay upfront the excluding VAT price, which is two thousand four hundred and ninety-five, and then Roughly. it's pretty much exactly that uh, two thousand four hundred ninety-five pounds eighty-three pence to yeah. be precise. Well um, remembered. Yes, I've done this a lot of times. And then uh, when it comes to importing the speakers, you'll get an email from DHL, which are our couriers of choice, and there's basically a link to pay the VAT import duty, which brings it back up to the list price or near enough yeah, assuming a 20 de- percent dependent rate. on what the tax rate is in your country in a lot of cases in america it's only four percent yeah so new york i think um, is eight because i was just speaking to a customer in new york so i think it's eight percent there california is about four percent yeah so that's um, you, you get quite a saving on the on what it would cost you here which is which is good most european countries are 20 or 19 mm. I think Australia is 19 or New Zealand. Yeah, uh, and if, as a business, you are VAT registered, you can obviously claim that back as well. Um, so, obviously, that works for some people. Yeah, and attached to that question as well was... Uh, lost it. Uh, is there a warranty yes, on the speakers? Yes, that, that was it. Yes, there is, and we need to put... We keep forgetting to put that on the website. It was on the old website, but <laughs> I've updated it so many we times. We need to put that on the website. Yeah, uh, yeah. there's a three-year warranty on the Mum 8 and the Mum 6. Um we haven't had. I mean, we tried to blow them up when mm. we developed them. We've, mm. we've, we, we were testing them for for a very long time, particularly the electronics. Sure. Um, we haven't had any warranty issues at all. I don't know how many pairs are out in the world now. It's about a sixty odd. It's about sixty. Yeah, we haven't had any warranty issues at all, apart from one, which wasn't really a warranty issue. Uh, where the customer had a huge power surge in their house and it took one of the amplifiers out. Mm. Um, and there's an internal fuse on the amplifier board as well. It actually took the internal fuse out, so it managed to get past the fused <laughs> IEC. He also didn't use the IEC leads that come with them. He used one with a higher fuse rating in, so that's the bit that should have blown and yep. didn't. Yep. Um, but 
that so not really a warranty problem as it wasn't anything wrong sure. with the, the speaker but we just replaced the amplifier the next day and he was up and running again sure like that and that's what we aim to do with with and again it's modular and so you know if your amp goes wrong and you've got a session um looming we can get you a new amp module just get you working get you up and running um so yep that's that. i can I'm hear floppy gonna, murdering gonna, things in the corridor see what's happening uh, uh so cost billingham has very kindly sent another super chat very oh, very wow. big thanks to you cost uh is he about to bring in some murder no, I think he's done. Oh. Yeah, floppy you absolute it's, terror it's beast such a cute cat and he can t- kill so many unless things you're a, unless you're a mouse there's the boy he's that time there he is. is um so floppy you naughty boy floppy hasn't given us no, a super good. chat he's, but cost billingham has and cost said how many of your mums do you have to shift before you can afford a pair of your own that's a great question as you might have <laughs> yeah. noticed i still don't have any speakers in here no um, you got one well i've got Pro- one you got one prototype the there's, there's one behind mark which is a prototype of a new thing we're doing um basically the most important thing is getting speakers out to customers. And obviously, if there's a spare pair here, that's a pair that's not going to a customer. So the point at which I will have my own pair of speakers in here that stays in here and isn't for testing is when we've fulfilled all the orders within a reasonable time frame and can maybe get ahead of orders uh, because then, obviously, we're not keeping people waiting. So, I mean, I'm not that fussed, to be fair. Most of the stuff I do in here doesn't require speakers like i can if i'm editing i can just do it on headphones or whatever and then go in and check next door on the the atmos system um yeah and i think even the, even the ones i'm using are an older dear floppy please design. do not stand on the end stream um, button that would be really shit <laughs> yeah. please don't do that uh yeah even the ones i'm using are an older design that have got the the hype amps in the back um sure that was before we redesigned that and made the the amp removable um but obviously i need those pretty much every day so yeah Look at that floppy. He's a floppy cat. He's sweet hair. Uh, lots of people still asking, uh, will we sell kits? Uh, simple answer, no, we won't. Um, sorry about that. And can we sell the components only? Can we? Can you buy just the drivers uh, from us or just the amps from us? And the answer to that is no as well. Um, so as part of our deal with Purify and Bleasma and Hypex, we have to sell the components as a, as a whole system. Um, so yeah, no kit options in the works at the moment. No. So maybe if we went to some other kind of driver driver system or amp system um, with different licensing options, that could happen. But for now, nothing planned. Yeah, I, th- I mean, the advice we've had from other manufacturers who have gone into the DIY market is mm-hmm. that it's 80% of your customer service issues for 5% of your um, mm. revenue. So it's kind of... Um, it's a, it can be a massive ball lake, basically. Sure. Um, and it's and we're not really you know, that's not really our intended customer. Our intended customer is people like you who are working in audio and you know making music, mixing sure. music, mastering music. Um, and most of those people don't want to be faffing around with the kit. They just want to. Yeah. So do, do, um, do do the thing, and the way we've priced it as well is it wouldn't really be any cheaper. I mean, if you the uh, the Mum Eight we sell for five nine nine five. If you were to buy all the components yourself from a company like Sound Imports or Parts Express in America, not that you can buy the Bleesma drivers anymore because again Stanislav has pulled yep. out of the DIY market um, and is dealing with OEM clients like us exclusively. Um, if you were to buy everything yourself, I think it worked out to about four and a half thousand pounds. Yeah. Plus, you need to buy um, tools and all yeah, that. Yeah, and then nonsense. you've got to make the cabinets, and you've got to you've got to do all that. So it's not. And we did ask a lot of people when we were considering doing a kit, why? What is your prime motivation for buying a kit? And they all said to save money. Hmm. Um, and then the answer to the "Have you got any previous woodwork experience?" was no. So that's sure. when we decided we're just asking for a massive load of trouble here. So, and you know, if you've if you've got a kit wrong and you're in Alabama, there's not a lot we can do about it. Um, if if you know if you're down the road, you can bring it in and we can we can fix stuff again. But um, yeah, so no no plans for that. Floppy's sitting right in the way of the comments, <laughs> so I can't see any. Get old floppy right in the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'll read one. So Mark has commented again uh, saying in France it's a painful 20% VAT. So it's actually the same here same in the here, UK. Yeah. So you could probably imagine that the mums would end up pretty much at their list price by the time you've imported them into France. So, And that's one other question we get 
asked a lot as well is that can we make the shipping invoice price lower so yes. the import duty is lower and the answer to that is absolutely, absolutely no because that is fraud and tax avoidance um and yeah we're They're out. pretty tight on that in the uk we're as well out of, we're out of business in no time yeah. at all so uh the answer unfortunately to that is absolutely not mm. good thanks you just helped me finish my coffee that's all right uh little, little, where are we uh got your said put my coffee down uh have you ever thought of doing a tour maybe head to the uk and do your measurements then tour major cities and rent studio time to demo to the usa so we can hear them and of course get the youtubers to review i would love that if we didn't have to be here building speakers yeah and if we had 50 grand to do it yes that's the, so that's, that's the other thing in, which we haven't in the um, future i would absolutely love to do that kind of thing as soon as we're able to do it um it yeah would, if we've got it a would be amazing if we've got a workshop full of staff that are building them and and we know that the quality control is good and stuff like that and and uh obviously flop needs looking after as well because he does live here um then um yes but at the moment that's a that's a little way off but yeah i'd like to do that and i'd like to do that in europe hmm. that would be good as well go and see yesco and, and white sea and, and all those yeah, people for yeah, sure that'd be good maybe we should do that first because it's nearer hmm yeah, it would actually, and we can drive that. We've driven to Europe Ooh, before. Yeah. Many, many, many times. Um, will your speakers be available through retailers or will they remain available directly from you? Now, so the thing is, there are pros and cons to doing it both ways. So the pros to going through a retailer is obviously you'll have them in your local area in the shop that you could technically go and demo. Um, but the downside of that is the speakers end up twice the cost. Right. They'll be about 12 grand. Now I disagree with that. If you're in America and you and you live in New York and you're buying them from Sweetwater, mm. you are nowhere near the shop because they've only got one. Well, yeah, that's assuming we only sold in Sweetwater. But let's say that there was a, a number but of if retailers. You, yeah, but a retailer is going to want to do a exclusivity deal at least initially. Sure. Um, so, and, and it's the same in the UK. If you buy from KMR, they've got one shop. If you buy from SX Pro, they've got one shop. If you buy from Studio Care, they've got one shop. Sure. Uh, if you buy from DV247, they now haven't got any shops. Um, all the all the dealers that had a network of shops up and down the country have either one shop or no shops these days. So there's so there's no mm. real advantage to. Yeah, to that, and the disadvantage um, is it would end up twice the cost at between ten and twelve grand. So the reason that it's actually something I have to explain to people quite a lot when they get in touch is these speakers sonically will compare to a ten grand speaker or a twelve yeah. grand speaker. So case in point, we're re we're replacing quite a few ATC SEM forty fives, PMC six twos, eight twos. We've been doing that quite a lot so far. So that's the kind of tier we're competing against, and but they cost half that they cost half mm. what an SEM 45 costs which off the top of my head I think is about 11,000 yeah, 11,800 um, and that's the only reason is is not because they're worse speakers it's simply because we sell directly so it yeah. would add a huge margin on like 50 60 70 percent if we were to sell through other chains yeah generally it's more than that generally it's it could it, be it yeah it could double the price doubles each time uh, you exactly go, you go through so if you're happy to pay 12 grand go for it but you yeah, know, and in hi in hi fi world, just for distribution, there can be seventy percent margins, which is ridiculous. Um, again, that's not a world we're planning on going into. But no. it's, it's pro audio margins are a little bit less. But um, we decided very early on that it was a benefit to you um, mm. to buy them direct from sure. us, and that also that was a benefit to us as well because we pretty much know every single customer. Mm. Um, if, you know, we've had with most of the people in the UK, we've we've physically gone and delivered the speakers. In fact, I think everyone sure. in yep. the UK, apart from Ian, who bought a second pair, yep. where we sent them to him, but we'd already you know set up the first pair for him. Um, and you know, we've been to Edinburgh and and Manchester and um, and all over the place. And so that means that uh, whereas if if those people had bought them through a dealer network, then we're not we haven't got that one to one. Sure interaction and that's kind of really important to us as well mm. um and even again sales abroad most people we've hooked up on a on a video call with um because because yep. we and the conversation keeps going because we want to make sure that people are really happy with these for um, sure 
So, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a customer service thing, isn't it? We're trying to. Yeah. Um, so Spencer said, can you tell us more about having a production facility in the USA? Is this something that's going to happen or something we're thinking about? So we're in kind of the final stages of negotiating with someone at the moment. I'm fairly sure it's going to happen. Uh, who will build all of our US sales. Um, so anyone who, or well, not only the US, but Canada as well, anyone in the North America continent um, who buys a pair, likely, if this goes ahead, will have their pair built by this company in the USA. Mm. So we've got some test parts on the way to them now. Um, they're doing some test cuts while we speak, and we're going to meet up, have a chat, see how it goes. And then if if all works out, then that will help us to get the production times the lead times down because we've then got two teams of people working on it we've got yep. the the parts closer to their destination as well um so again sales and customer service and all that stuff you'll still deal with us directly yes but if you're in america it means shipping will be a lot cheaper um and it'll be a lot it'll be a lot quicker as mm-hmm. well um and yeah really the only reason this is happening is because the the, the company we're we're in talks with at the moment are just incredible and they're for sure doing this 25 years um and really know their stuff when it comes to cabinet mm-hmm. construction we've had some 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 video sent through test cuts and they look absolutely incredible yeah literally the first test cut was perfect yeah so i was like oh, um yes. yeah so that's so that's that's really exciting so but again that's in the future but it it, it we're going to do everything we can to make that happen for because sure. it's of benefit to everyone um as Hmm. as well um we've had a super chat from the legally blind jedi thank you hey, very much thank indeed, you very much who asks is there a plan for a way to upgrade the mum six to something similar to the mum eight later yes absolutely so if you watch our little video that we put out on thursday that's the one i think it was thursday um Ow. the floppy's attacking me the <laughs> the sub for the mum six um will be that so there'll be various things you'll be able to do with the mum six uh, you can use it as a small two-way on its own, as it is, which is flat down to, I think, about 40-something hertz. Yeah, the MUM6 is 45. MUM8 Four, is 26. Um, if you want lower base extension, then you can add the... We're calling them subs, but they're not really subs. They're kind of multi-purpose base extenders. Bum end. Yeah. Um, and another question we have a lot is, what stand should I buy to put my MUM6s on? Um, mm. And the answer is our ones that are also subs. <laughs> exactly. Because that makes perfect sense. Kills two birds with one stone. Yep. Um, so you'll be able to put your MUM6s on those um, and use them as a sort of two-and-a-half-way system. Mm. Um, and one of the advantages of the Purify base drivers is that they are exceptionally good up into the mid range. Sure. Um, so I think from memory, the six inches flat to about three and a half k. It's yeah, pretty good. Um, and there's only there's there's only about two models of two way speaker I would be prepared to work on that have ever existed. Um, <laughs> one is the Mum Six, um, and the yeah. other one is the PSI the A17. A17. Sorry. Yeah, same yeah. here. I, I like the PSI yeah. one. Um, any other two way, no matter how much you spend on it, there's always a bit of a hole in the middle for in in terms of detail for me. Uh, but anyway, to get back to the question, yes, yeah, so you'll be able to to put the mum sixes on uh, subby standy boys, and then if you want to, if you want the super super detail of the mum eight mid, then you'll be able to buy the base extenders without a base driver. Put the base drivers from your mum six into those, and then replace the hole in the MUM6 mm. with the Bleesma, uh dome mid with an adapter ring that will just screw sure. in. And then you'll have a fully, fully, fully fullable uh, three-way system. And we think we're the first people in the world yeah. to ever so, have a two-way monitor that you'll be able to fully upgrade to a three-way. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously that's going to pose some challenges. And one uh, question that was left in the comments of our video that went out on Thursday is how are you going to account for the fact that there's going to be a wider separation between the center of drivers in this MUM6 system with a mid driver? And obviously there are things that need designing into that. This is still a prototype that we're working on and there will be DSP accommodations made for that. Mm. So we'll do our best to make sure that that is a cohesive system. It's not just going to be chuck a driver in and wish for the best. It's going to be very clearly tested, prototyped, you know, make sure that it works flawlessly because obviously we don't want to make a bad speaker. Um, so 
you know, don't worry, everything's going to be fully tested before we sell a single one of those. Yeah, um, and there also needs to be a safety mechanism built in as well. Yes, because there does. If you have if if putting the bleedsman bid in the mum six is on say preset three, uh, if you accidentally switch back to preset one and you've got thirty hertz going through it at ninety dB, <laughs> boom, it's not going to last very long. So there's lots of lots of little things to iron out, sure, like that. But we've got it. We've got it pretty much. Yeah, pretty okay. much. Pretty much sorted. I think. Yep. Um, so next question, there's quite a few questions, so we're going to tackle a couple of them. Uh, Benj said, can the logo screen on each speaker be different? Yeah, you can have whatever you want. Um, yeah, literally. So each speaker's DSP is independent. So you can have, if you want a picture of my face on one and Mark's face on the other one, you can do that. Don't know why you'd want that. No, you definitely wouldn't want that. Cos <laughs> uh, says, if you do develop a stand, you should call it the step mum. <laughs> <laughs> Which is brilliant. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you, Cos. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, da, 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 where are we? There, there was a load of really cool questions that I need to answer. Uh, so, uh, I've lost it. Hang on, hang on. This is what happens. There's so many questions. Coming. Okay, I'll answer one while you're looking. Um, from RJC Music Productions. Sorry if this has been asked already. It hasn't. Uh, are, there th- are there pairs of mum eights available for demoing? Um, and are there stands for the mum eight? So I've made some stands for us for the mum eight, um, but they're they're quite expensive to for us to make. That's the kind of thing that needs to be outsourced sure. to someone. So that would work out more expensive than something you could get from a sort of generic music shop. But we might make, you know, we might show you what we've done with those. But it's just basically a column with a platform either side of it mm-hmm. filled up with sand. Very boring. Um, so stands, yes, but not probably not commercially viable. Um, are there pairs of mummates available for demoing? We have had pairs of mummates available for demoing, and every time we've demoed them, we've sold them, and then haven't got any pairs of mummates for demoing anymore. So, so that's something we're trying to work towards with the next production run. Basically, we've overordered everything for the next production run. Um, I think we're going to have something like um, at least twenty-four more amps than we'll need, and, and we're trying to get ahead on stock. Sure. In which case, yes, we will have pairs available for demoing. Um, not sure how that will work. At the moment, if you buy a pair of my mates and you don't like them, then let us know and we'll refund you and you can send them back. So that's kind of a mm. that's kind of a demo. Like thing, a thirty day money day money back. Yeah. But, um, but no one's done that yet. We n- we Yeah, we, yeah, n- we have a hundred percent of customers yeah, happy. We never get them back. They just always stay where they've gone. So but we are trying to get ahead and because we need other people to review them as well. Mm. Um so sure. yeah, that's the that's 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 the, the problem um, with that. And they they're, and they're really expensive for us to build, obviously. It's not sure. a cheap thing to build at all. It's not like we're building them for five hundred quid and then knocking them out for six grand. It's they cost a lot of money to make. Mm. Um, Peter Samuelson said, I think the question above was, can you trade in a pair of mum sixes to a pair of mum eights? We haven't discussed that. I'm not too sure if that would be possible, but yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I would say yes, because I just want our customers to be happy. I suppose that's the goal. Um, but, but I mean, you'll be able to do that anyway by upgrading the six as we spoke about earlier um but if someone wants to go from a pair of mum sixes to a pair of mum eights i'm sure we can make it happen we can get the mum sixes back and we can test them and then we can sell them as b stock yeah um with a you know with a discount or Mm. whatever so i i personally would be perfectly happy to do that sure if if someone decided that's what they wanted to do so that's something that we're quite proud of is that we're quite happy to be flexible and you know happy to change stuff around and it's we're not like a, a boring corporate company. We're happy to kind of make sure the customer's happy, you know, work around what they need. And then as long as it's not some kind of outlandish request, we're pretty yeah. happy to kind of work with that. Yeah, and we've done that with the custom sizes and designs sure. and stuff like that. Uh, Mark's asked a really good question, which is, I really never heard high-end speakers and don't know what to expect from where I am. Uh, the most... So... so We've obviously got a lot of these out into the world now, and people have been upgrading from mm. from cheaper monitors or, or lesser monitors. Um, and there's several things that everyone says. The first thing is the level of detail. So you will hear things in music that you've been listening to for as long as you can remember, 
that you've never heard before. Even Phil Harding said that, and yeah. he's been working in music yeah. for 51 yeah, years. Yeah, and he's like, oh, I never noticed that before. Um, yeah, it, that's the first thing you notice. The second thing that you'll notice is, um, um, so this is just me speaking from personal experience, is when I went from, um, I think, Adam, mm. the original a- A77s or something, I think, to ATCs, uh, I suddenly realised that everything I'd ever done was shit. <laughs> and then and no, I had to up up my game mm. significantly because a lot of speakers kind of uh well they don't show you the details they don't sort of bear all there's some there's hidden stuff in there that you can't hear not because they're designed to do that but because they're built to a price so the drivers sure. in them just aren't capable of replicating that amount of detail and if you've got a two way and not a three way um and you know, the two way with a purified base driver is a very different thing but they haven't been around very long because Purify haven't been around very long. But traditionally, um, your base driver is also doing a lot of the mid information. So as the cone is moving in and out at 100 hertz to, to convey the base information, it's also moving out at 1,000 hertz to convey the mid information, and that causes intermodulation distortion. And, and that means that judging things like compression is very difficult because um you you just can't really hear what's happening because of that distortion and that's the key thing in speakers as well is distortion it's what are the speakers doing to the sound um and with cheaper drivers you get driver compression as well so not only that are they distorting the sound but they're also compressing mm. the sound as well and that again and you can get port compression also on a ported design which most are because they want to extract the maximum amount of spl from the driver rather sure. than the maximum amount of quality so there's all these things kind of kind of stack up but the first thing you'll notice is um just detail and stuff that you've never heard before the second thing is oh i need to up my game which is what it's all about and that's a bit of a learning curve bit of a process and the third thing you'll notice is that um you'll start to hear tons of detail in things like reverb tails Yep. Again, the amount of compression you're using, um, tiny EQ tweaks become major EQ tweaks and, and you start to go back to get things right at source. Um, and then once you've kind of got through that initial learning stage, then tr- mm. the translation game ups massively sure. and your mixes start to translate really well. On, and what's interesting as well that I've found, and I know you've found, and this has also just been echoed by Gotya, who says things you loved are really not as great as you thought. So there are some speakers that can kind of hide problems in a mix. And when you move to a more high-end speaker that's more revealing and more transparent, you hear a lot of problems in mixes. So, for example, my favorite genres are rock and metal. Excuse me. And there are so many mixes where I I listen to it on headphones, on my AirPods or whatever, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is great. And then I go into the studio and I'm like, what have you done? What have you done? (laughs) And I'm just like, I hate this so much. So... You know, it it will reveal a lot of problems in mixes. You you become quite judgmental, I think, because you're like, right, you could have changed that, you could have changed that. But at the same time, you know, if you find material that's really well produced, it's like an entire new world, isn't it? It's like, oh, damn, I've never heard that before. It's, it's a complete other level of listening experience when you move to high-end monitoring. The, the best analogy is always it's like if you're familiar with video editing, sure. um, to, uh, it, it's like colour grading your video on a black and white monitor. Mm. Uh, you've got, really got no idea what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas when you get up to, to higher-end speakers, um, then you turn the colour on and you can actually see really well what you're doing and then that translates to other monitors tvs phones everything else yeah um there's a very important question here that's coming from the slow growth who said hi i just joined the stream sorry if this was asked before but i read today that the bleesma drivers are end of life will you have replacements or will there be a follow-up speaker version they are not end of life the reason you're seeing end of life on retail websites is that bleesma have stopped selling them to the diy market or the general public They are only available to OEM manufacturers such as us. So they're not end of life. We have a perfect stream of drivers that we're able to access. It's just we are the only ones that can buy them, basically. It's just OEM manufacturers who are building them into a product like the Mum 8 um, are the only ones that can buy. So you cannot buy a pair on sound imports or anything like that where you used to be able to buy them. That's why it says end of life. So no worries with that. We're able to get them. We had a bit of a heart attack when we saw that. 
Yeah, I know. As, I was like, oh, my as, God. As well. Uh, so, obviously, contacted Bleesman, <clears throat> contacted Stanislav, and he said, yeah, no, he's just not selling them to the... Yeah. Um, to the to the public anymore, mm. basically. So they're end of life on sound imports um, and parts express, but they're definitely not end of life. Yep. As far as and even so, there was actually a couple of questions that came through on emails recently. Um, we announced at the end of last year that there was a bit of a production problem with the beryllium drivers. Um, they're now back up and running with the beryllium redesign, um, and so we are able to get regular stock of beryllium mids and tweeters. Um, in exactly the same quantities as silks which is good news yep. um because i know a lot of people were waiting for those so if you have been kind of holding on you're now able to get them which is really good news yeah the bad news is the price has gone up a bit but we're absorbing that sure here another really good question um from asio head who says uh, seeing you're using purified drivers haven't you considered using their eigentact amps as well instead of hypex and why or if not why not mm. um because the Purify amps aren't suitable for what we're doing with a three-way DSP-driven solution at the moment. The the Eigentac amps are great for a two-channel amplifier for the passive crossover hi-fi people, um, but at the moment, they they unless you have a standalone DSP solution, there's nothing that integrates with those mm. in the box. So it would make it. So yes, we could do that, and yes, they're fantastic amplifiers. Um, but just not but for our use. Not for our use, and the Hypex, uh, you know, the Hypex. Well, that's the thing. I've are fantastic got, I've got no well. complaints on those Hypexes. And they're super transparent. Yeah. There's no distortion there. And again, it really was good. Bruno from Purify that was key in the development of those as mm. well. Um, and the, the distortion and noise floor on those is just down right down there. It's mm. ridiculous. Well, there's a um, there's been a few people that we've shown the speakers to in demos who knew that they were DSP based, and so but basically digital speakers and they've been shocked at how transparent they sound because they were expecting to hear some kind of number crunching happening. there's a lot of misconceptions about dsp and yes. class d generally yeah and for the longest time it was crap yeah i mean class um, d has basically come a long until way. until bruno started working on it yeah, yeah, yeah it was it was no good and then he you know he's done he did with that what he's done with with lars and everyone at purify on the yep. driver technology and you know the goal is mm. get the distortion down as as quickly as possible mm. uh, as, as low as possible sorry um yeah. but you know the, it's the modular upgradable monitor so if we uh, end up working with purify on an amp solution or for, for the future then that will be something that you can if it's a noticeable upgrade and it's worth the, um, the money then that will be something that um mm. you can upgrade yep uh, in time uh, so RJC Music Production said, tough question. Uh, I'm looking at the ATC SEM45 Pro. Is the Mum 8 a similar tonal transient performance and low distortion presentation? Now, I mentioned earlier, I don't know if you missed it, but I mentioned earlier the SEM45 is one of the speakers that we have been consistently replacing. So um, our speakers have gone to replace those in studios who have just purchased them. Um, in terms of transients i would say the mum 8 probably wins because of its sealed cabinet design yeah. so you've got basically the springiness of the air for want of a better word behind the driver which is pushing back on the driver and that allows for good transients because basically you're getting the right amount of resistance and it's not relying on the port to basically spring the air back yeah, that's not to say that the low end of an SCM45 is flabby at all because no. they have nailed the port sure. on that thing. But it is still a port, so you've still it's still a resonant system. Yeah, um, and there is still port compression, and there is there is you know a lot of other things happening as well. And also, in terms of tonality as well, on a ported system, when you turn the volume down, you do lose a bit of bass, like super a, low bass. And you really notice that we've got SCM200 still in the in the in the back here. Like you, that. you really notice that if you turn if you're at low volumes, there's no bass at all. Mm. And then when the volume starts to come up, then it's oh, it's suddenly like someone switched the bass on. Sure. And that's when there's enough air moving to, to for the port to do its thing. And so in terms of transit response, certainly in the low end. Um, I think that I know we're making the mum eights, but certainly in the low end, I think the mum eights beat beats it because not only is it a sealed enclosure, but the the purified bass driver is just insane. It mm -hmm. is, and if you look at measurements that have been done on pretty much any bass driver, the purified tops the lot of them. There isn't a bass driver in the world that does a better job 
in pretty much every measurable a aspect than that. Um, the other thing with the SCM45 is the mid driver is very good, but it's not as good as the one you get when you go up to the SCM50 and above. Um, it's not the super linear <coughs> mid. <coughs> no, so the distortion is slightly higher on that, um, and there's, the, 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 there's, there's not as much detail in that. As, as there is it's still incredible um but there's not as much detail um in that as there is in the higher the mm. higher end from the SEM 50 up in the in the ATC yeah. uh, and talking of moving to higher end mids uh Martin has just said silk versus beryllium talking of the mum eight mids is there a reason to pick silk other than a lower price it can be personal ta like personal taste personal preference it can also depend heavily on the genre of music that you work on if you work on hip hop, for example, I've personally found that the silk ones probably suit that better. Um, no, I disagree. Exactly, it's personal Completely. taste. So a lot of people think that the brilliant is harsh. It's not harsh. It is not harsh at all. Um, and the only reason that 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 a lot of music doesn't sound as good on the brilliums as it does on the silk, and the reason for that is it's not as good. And that's it. Mm. And it particularly shows up with the genre you listen to a lot. Rock and metal. The the brilliums just show it as it is. So if you've done an overcompressed, flat as a pancake, crap mix, uh, with where everything's happening in the mid range, um, and there's you've just got distorted guitars and the, the vocals distorted and everything's distorted and it's just crap mid range <laughs> mush. Yeah. Then the brilliums just go. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. and try and make you do something to give some separation and some some um they they because the the drivers are such low distortion and so detailed they really show distortion and saturation that you're adding mm -hmm. um so as far as i'm concerned um it's beryllium all the way yeah. um uh, for me, yeah, for me, I think it would be a budgetary consideration. The only time, maybe, if you're doing more tracking than mixing, I think the silks might be better because, again, the silks are yep. incredibly detailed, but they're not as detailed or as natural as the brilliums. And the brilliums could maybe drive you insane if you were miking up a snare drum um, initially because you're going to be moving that mic millimeters at a time until you've got yeah. the sound you want but again that's a good thing that ups your production skills it ups your production you know your tracking quality game and you'll be find that you're going you're not going oh yeah that sounds all right we'll tweak it later you're going back and making that sure that that snare sounds as good as it can be before anyone hits record so it's a sort of it's a it's it a pushes sort of, your own quality level up. yeah it's a cumulative for process. sure um, um but it can be personal preference i mean i i am the same i do prefer the silks um it's just i've heard other people saying that maybe uh, sorry i prefer the brilliums but i've heard other people saying that the silk works better for them um but like at gear fest for example some people preferred the silk but yeah on paper the brilliums win yeah for sure yeah um the naked noise boy said are pdp polo shirts for sale and hoodies etc now there is a shitty merch website called flopcat.co.uk <laughs> which you don't even know exists um <laughs> don't go on it okay. it's so basically what we need to do is come up with some really sick merchandise that looks awesome and that people actually want uh and then we'll sell you some t-shirts and hoodies and stuff because at the moment what's there's a bit shit to be honest yeah we'll, um, we'll work on that it's not it, high priority because no, it's like exactly. my merch and all that it, crap, it's not but... something we've really thought about no um but yeah in the future if we can come up with a nice you know sexy clothing design then we absolutely will so mystics commented so he's had a chance to compare the sem 45s with the mum eights and there's his answer there um Read so it we'll, out for we'll try and remain it. unbiased but mystic says i was going to get the sem 45 i compared them with the mum eight uh, and this is the silk version of the mum eight um, and now i have the mum eight the transient response imaging and frequency response on the mum eight is on another level um, there we go. so Thank that's you, Mystic. That's, that's Mystic's answer. Thank you very much indeed for all your supportsies. Supportsies. Uh, yes. Mark said, I was surprised James told me the Mum 8 is working well in small or medium rooms. What I like are low and tight bass of those speakers. I think I'll keep my sub only for LFE and not for stereo work. Yeah, so I mean, there are some users who have got the speakers in really small rooms, like maybe three by three meters, three by two and a half. Mm. Um, 
and it's still working because they're sealed speakers you don't have to go loud to to push that low end you can listen quietly and still get the same accuracy so it works for small rooms and likewise if you put them in a big room like this i mean this room's like six meters by seven it's pretty huge they still work fine yeah you know they can be really flexible um uh Koss says you should hear my mum would be a hoodie I'd wear. Now, on our Gearfest roller banners, we had I Can Hear Your Mum from Out Here. Uh, there was also a design I came up with, no, wasn't there, that didn't, no. that didn't make it. <laughs> no. So something that <laughs> happens all the time on our YouTube channel is I have to censor Mark, and he hates it, but I just know that we'd get cancelled within five minutes if I didn't do this. No, because no, 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 some no, of the no. shit that Mark says, I'm like, we cannot put that on the internet. We would get destroyed. But, I mean, you can tell them about that one because that's not even that offensive. I just thought, so to kind of lay the ground beforehand, bear in mind, this was our first ever exhibition at Gearfest. We'd never done one before. And I thought, what better way to start off an exhibition than getting banned from doing them at this venue ever again by putting really offensive posters outside? Go for it. Tell you, I loved it. But, I mean, to be fair, Brian did like it, but I, I already know what and the reactions would be. Richard from Aston was killing himself laughing. He was like, oh, man, you should have absolutely done that. That was a really good accent. Thanks. Uh, that's because I, 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 yeah, I was up that way for a while. But explain. Oh, am I allowed to explain what that was? Yes. But it censored. No, explain. Okay. I give I, you permission. I, so I came up with a, I thought, wouldn't it be great to have a mum eight uh, with a picture of Flop next to it with some claw holes in the base driver that Flopper destroyed, and then the text above it was, I fucked your mum. <laughs> that was my... That, See, the thing is, I think it's hilarious. That was I my just design, know what... and I wasn't allowed to... If you don't like <sighs> it, don't look at it, or don't buy it, or whatever. I know, anyway, I know. moving on. Um, anyway. Gotcha says, you were all ATC boys before this, so I imagine you were shooting for something like them. Is mm. that right? Yeah, exactly. I had the SEM 200s in my room and was mastering on them in stereo world every single day and we wanted something that was as good as that tonally and in terms of um you know all the all the tick boxes all around the room what i didn't want was what we heard in most atmos studios we went in and that was fantastic speakers in the front and dog shit around the room sure um we just didn't want that at all we wanted um the, you know you, you might not want to put a kick drum up above you in the ceiling but actually i've been doing some stuff this week where i have so i need to make sure that i'm not using a speaker that is i need to make sure i haven't got aura tones um sure. around around the room and scm 200s in the front so the goal was to get something that was up to the to the level of those um and we couldn't afford an atc system and that was the whole kind of inspiration for it it was it was like right okay we need to try and design something that is up at that level that we can afford yep uh, as the Mummy has its own DSP on board, how do they perform with room correction software slash hardware? Now, there's one that we can straight up recommend every single time without fail, and that's the Trinov. I'll be back in two minutes while you're talking about that. Okay. Um, so it's he was right by your feet under the table. Yes. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so the Trinov is, in both our opinions and the other people that have heard it as well with the Mums, the Trinov does win every time in terms of quality kind of uh preserving the audio as well is not like destroying it um it's true that the trinov is super expensive i mean for what you for what you get it's worth the investment every single penny it sounds phenomenal it it can really work wonders assuming that you have a room that's already got some acoustic treatment in it if you try and use a trinov in a bathroom not going to work you have to have made a decent effort to treat your room and at least get it into kind of a, a workable state um, and then the Trinov will do some tidying up um, but the Trinov in particular will just solidify the stereo image even more it will kind of increase the depth the perception of depth that you get from the speakers just speaking in this case about the mum eights um, and yeah just generally tidy everything up and I think it's pretty good and it, it, it works really well with the mums, which is why we became a Trinov dealer. So we can now sell Trinov Novas exclusively to people that have mum six or mum eight monitors. We can't sell them to anyone else. Um, and that's why, because we just think it sounds the best. Now, Sonarworks is an option. It's a fraction of the price of a Trinov. 
but I don't know if it's as good. It doesn't do all the stuff that Trinov can do where... I mean, the Trinov can split the the frequency spectrum into like 72 bands or something like that and then individually process each one. Um, and it will do everything from like amplitude to phase response to group delay, impulse. It, it will do a hundred things and it all works and sounds very, very transparent. It doesn't sound like you're processing it, even though the Mum 8s have got DSP and they're digital and all that. As I said, the DSP on the Mum 8s is also incredibly transparent. It does not sound digital in any way. Um so yeah, I mean, we we perfectly happily advocate using room corrections to get your speakers in the best place possible. Trinov, if you can afford it, obviously is not cheap, um, but there are other options out there like Sonarworks as well. Um, I know that Mikhail Mikulski is using Sonarworks. Yeah. Was it Dirac? No, Dirac he's using, right. um, and it sounded pretty good with Dirac. Can't remember yeah. how much that is. It's not super expensive, um, but seemed to do a good job. But... But again, we've spoken about this lots of times before. A lot of those are just EQ based, and yeah. you need to, um, if you've got a proper acoustician into your room, they would look at what is mm. causing any unevenness in the EQ curve rather than the EQ curve. So fixing the EQ curve with EQ only gets you. Sure. So yeah, I, like, said I think you need a, a good starting point really to get yeah. the most out of it you I need think, a decently treated room i think one of the biggest things we've heard with trinov lately is was in shane ivers room so uh shane's got a pair of mum six um in his room he's got one of the smallest rooms we've ever been in mm. and one of the best treated so he went through yesco from acoustics insider he went through his course worked with yesco to treat his room Let's see if and for a room up. that measures a, what is it, about two and a half by three meters it's or not something. very big it sounds incredible. He has done such a good job of that room. Uh, but there's one thing he can't address with acoustic treatment. Well, he probably could, but it's not very practical. Um, and that's desk reflections. Sure. And we didn't really hear the desk reflections until we trinoffed the speakers in the room. And then all of a sudden, those desk reflections were gone. And I don't know how it does it. Black magic, but it does, and it just brought everything together. It was 10 15 percent hmm. improvement, but it not, was you know, not huge. You can still work with the mum sixes on their own in that room, which which Shane is, and get spectacular results. But it just took that one last little thing that you can't you can't put you know six inches of insulation on your desk, and you've still got to have a screen, and you've got to have a keyboard, and you've got to have stuff, and you've got to have something to put it on, otherwise you can't work uh, until we can so do I, the VR thing. Yeah, well, um, I'll just get a photo up of Shane's room so you guys can see what that looks like. Yeah which is that. So there's treatment on pretty much every wall um, and the ceiling and all that. So it's, you know, high quality stuff. Um, but, it, but yeah, it just, and you can see the desk there. So it's it's quite a big surface area. And obviously it's, it's the speakers are directly behind it as well. Um, but it just, it just cleaned that up. Didn't it, it did. It um, worked wonders. And I don't know how it does that. And it doesn't, again, with Sonarworks, it's only going to do it with EQ. Um, the Trinov the eq is the result of mm. what it's doing in other areas and yeah um yeah so mark said uh, i already have a trin of nova and it's top notch well if you have a trin of nova and you buy a pair of my mates you'll be really happy yeah, i can tell you that already a, yeah for sure um, um as long as you don't want to use the nova for atmos for sure yeah uh, we're still a bit pissed about that aren't we very very <laughs> we're very, very pissed about very that. pissed about that. <laughs> Um, Peter Roy said, hey guys, I'm your 1000% fanboy and Thank super you. excited and want to buy your gear. Thank you for your support. Um, and yeah, if you want to buy anything, you're more than welcome to send us an email info mm. at presentdayproduction.com. Um, but yeah, thank you for your support. And that's something I wanted to cover actually is especially during the last week, since this sound on sound review came out, it's kind of reignited how cool our community is i can hear the cat snoring yes, yeah. <laughs> it's reignited how cool our community is so you know there's always been huge amounts of support from everyone which we're super grateful for um because we're just two guys that love music and, and audio production and we love waffling on about it on the internet um so we're really grateful for everyone that supported us over the last four years because four years ago today we had 29 subscribers and wow I, one we released a video and it got 16 views in the first week so that's where we were four years ago and we've come so far since then 
and it's entirely due to the fact that people watch our videos and kind of support us online so we're very grateful for that um but also in terms of when this review came out there was a question about the frequency response of the speakers and i've had so many people messaging me mostly on discord saying have you tried this have you thought of that could this be the problem so there are people actively interested in helping us and suggesting things which is really cool and we really appreciate the fact that everyone is so invested in what we do yeah um you know because we care about what we do and it's nice to see that other people care just as much yeah for sure that's definitely um uh one one person of which is peter samuelson who's just mm -hmm. commented so he was messaging me on discord saying have you tried this have you tried that uh he said the phantom center and the 3d depth is crazy on the mum 8 without any room correction especially if you have a room where you can move the speaker out from the front wall so so a lot of times in our room we've got our room set up for atmos so we've got a left center right at the front <laughs> the amount of people that come in for a stereo demo Mm. and ask us to turn the center speaker off it's is so mad <laughs> insane and the center and, and then we get the, the center speaker isn't on and how many times have i had to hang my coat on it just that they're like no it is on it's, it's definitely on i can definitely the vocals there and i'm like it's not on and then yeah, you hang you your coat on, on it or a rug or something like that and then they go oh oh is that just oh <laughs> um yeah that happens all the time and i love it it's it's extremely satisfying um yeah the, the phantom center is in, again in a well-treated room with the speakers sure. well positioned is is crazy so the phantom uh the phantom center is obviously made possible by time alignment in the speakers you know they're kind of phase coherent and the depth is brought about by a lack of distortion. So you've got super low distortion amplifiers powering super low distortion drivers. Yeah. And you just get an almost tangible soundscape, which is what they said in Sound on Sound. Yeah, it feels you, it like feels you can like reach you can, out and you touch can reach it. into it. And that's that's upped again with the beryllium yes. drivers. Um and that's a lot of that's down to the the, the design of the drivers. Um mm -hmm. having having we knew we wanted domes when we were developing a speaker. We knew we sure. didn't want waveguides. We didn't want horns. We didn't want this. We didn't want that. We wanted domes. Mm -hmm. Um may, one, for one, one reason is because we were trying to match into the to the ACC system, um, which obviously have a very famous dome. Um but a lot of it's down to and and the the so so there's certain tracks that we're listening to in atmos at the moment and my favorite place to listen to them is in the back corner of the room <laughs> like completely out of the sphere of all the speakers because it's just great it, it it's and and again this week we've had lots of people walking around walking around the room mm. going oh yeah sounds amazing over here it's um i know bob clear mountain does that a lot he's mm. he's always walking around the room and um, enjoying himself for sure uh yella has commented saying hey just checking in you absolute legends hello um gonna listen to my orange boys for the first time tomorrow can't wait so yeah the rest of yellow speakers will be arriving tomorrow Yay. in uh holland good 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 and i'm super excited to see what you think that's good so these are the bright orange speakers that we showed a couple of live streams ago um yeah really looking forward to see what you think of yep. those um reassure said i've just visited your website to view pricing etc it looks by the way i imagine there's a word missing it looks awesome that's what you wanted to say the website looks awesome just wondering <laughs> uh is it likely that the color options will all be the same price in the future i would imagine probably not because we have to order we one have sheet to, of exactly material. Yeah. so light gray and black are the two that are most commonly ordered light gray is the most and black is the second most commonly ordered uh for the mums and obviously we have those in larger quantities so we we might make 24 cabinets at once in light gray and then 24 in black the reason that black is slightly more expensive so light gray is as is it's the list price black is slightly more expensive because it requires a little bit more finishing and there's like a monaco oil that goes onto it to create that smooth black finish yeah and that takes, terms, a, that takes a week to go off as well it, it so takes a long do, time to physically dry. do it then you've got to leave it for a week um, so the process on the black and the coloured is more intensive. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the other colours, as Mark said, the reason they are more expensive again is because we order those in per order. So because we, we get lots of sales in black and light grey, it makes sense to have tons of those. Orange, yellow, whatever it might be, are normally one-off orders. And so they are more expensive for us to make. Basically, they require a little bit more finishing as well and they 
are ordered in in smaller quantities so that's where that pricing comes from uh audio animals hello audio animals hello. youtube channel looking forward to hearing this system so yes, yes really exciting news i was texting paul from audio animals just before this live stream and paul is going to come on a live stream with us in a couple of weeks i believe it's going to be the 21st Excellent. of april and we are going to talk speakers and atmos and all, and all fun things kinds musical of things and nick as well of course if nick if wants to come yes out, very well indeed yeah the more the, the merrier yeah uh, so we met Paul and Nick from Audio Animals at Gearfest last year and had a few drinks with them at, on the Saturday night. And it just felt like we'd... What a lovely bunch of blokes. For sure. It just felt like we'd known them for, for years and years and years. Do you it? know what? That that um, first night at Gearfest when everyone stayed and went to the bar afterwards was one of the best nights out I've had in yeah, ages. Like, fa- there were yeah, so many fantastic. cool people there. And I just didn't want to go home. Like, yeah, well, I remember we were there till like midnight. Well, that's happening again this year, even though it's only on for the Saturday. Yes. Uh, there will be that afterwards. It's just that we've got to pack all the stuff up Boo. afterwards. Boo. But, um, we'll yeah, so we, yeah, we're looking forward to having, having uh, Audio Animals guys on the live stream. That'd be cool. <laughs> very inappropriate comment from Cuss. No is the answer. You cannot do that. Thank you very much. Uh <laughs> Yes. Anyway, um, <laughs> this, this is the kind of thing that gets you cancelled. Um, but yeah, thank you for all the questions so far. It's it's really interesting but, to see. All, but as a cabinet, yes, we can absolutely. Do we that. can make you a black. Cabinet. Yeah. In fact, that will be yes. the opposite to the thin ones that had a that had a black cabinet and a light grey front. So yes. yeah, we can do that. Uh, when will you start shipping worldwide for the speakers? Now surprise we've been selling them for a year already um (laughs) we have basically been so busy with selling these speakers worldwide for the last year that we haven't done a video we haven't had a chance to tell anyone Um, about it so we actually did the first foreign sale to canada in december 2022 and it was 16 months ago and it was the first pair that was the first pair went to canada the first ever serial number one um so we've been selling worldwide for like a year and a half um the only reason we've only just done a video is because the sound on sound review came out and we wanted to kind of show the world what we've actually been working on um but yeah that's why we've been so busy selling speakers abroad that we haven't been able to do youtube videos on it so there are quite a few people such as yourself who don't know that we've actually already been doing this for a while um if you want to send us an email, info at presentdayproduction.com, I'm very happy to explain all this and kind of talk you through how it all works. But yeah, they are already worldwide. I think from memory, we're now in 23 countries already in just a year, which has been quite exciting. Mm. Um, yeah, there are good. a big selection of countries. And if you go on our website and scroll down to where can I hear them on the, the homepage, you'll see a nice map with a dot of where are, uh, all the mums are. That's all the mums where in the world. Our, where our mums live. Uh, where are we? I live in Q8, the Middle East. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it should still be possible. We are able to ship pretty much worldwide. Yeah. There's a few countries we can't ship to. Um, yeah. So I think China is off the list at the moment. Yeah. Um, basically, there's a couple that we can't, but there's, there's if a few, you inquire. Yeah. Then there's, a, there's a few countries that don't use our courier and stuff just goes missing. Sure. And, um, so, um, sure. but, but most countries are, are doable, I think. There we go. Are there any mums in Brazil? So currently, no. Mm-hmm. There are no mums in South America or kind of East Asia at the moment. Or Asia at all, actually, I don't think. It's, it's Europe, Australia, North America are the continents where they're at at the moment. None in Antarctica, unfortunately. I wish the penguins had a pair. Um, China disapproves of your mum. It seems that they do. So the actual reason why we can't ship to China, at least without a hideous amount of paperwork, is it seems that you have to have a business registered in China to be able to ship into China or you sign up through some kind of freight forwarding company and all that. And that just adds tons and tons of cost to the transport. Um, Because I looked into this because we had a few people last month that got in touch from China saying, can I buy a pair? And... At the moment, it's you know it's not looking the easiest to ship to China. You have to be quite wary of scammy stuff as well. Yep, going on. There's um yeah, there's lots of reasons why we why we're not doing that. Hmm. 
Uh, Legally Blind Jedi said, I'm buying my first pair of monitors. I'm working, I've been working only on Neumann NDH30 headphones. I'm looking at three-way monitors at a similar price to the Mum 6, like Adam A77H. How would you say they compare? Hmm. I mean, so the A77, I think, is a two and a half way, isn't it? It's not actually a three-way. I can't even remember. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've heard it. Um, a good person to ask would be Reedy who's often in the chat because he was on Adam A77s before and moved to Mum 8s. So he would be able to give you a decent uh, kind of comparison. Yeah, and he's, he's now watching. bought a pair of Mum 6s as well, which he's will be leaving the building this week. So further down the line, he'll be able to comment on those as well. Yeah. Um, personally, I know what I'd go for, um, hmm. just based on quality of drivers sure. alone. Um, any European mainland mainland assembly plans to solve the VAT thing. Well, the VAT thing, he doesn't really need solving. So if you live in, say, Germany, mm-hmm. uh, if you buy a pair of Mum 8s at 4995... 5995. 5995, sorry. When you get to the checkout, that drops down to pretty much 4995. Um, and then you have... So we take the VAT off this end and it goes back on. That All it means is you don't the German extra. government get the tax instead mm-hmm. of the UK government. Uh, but other than that, there's no, there's no difference. Yeah. So, so it's not really a problem. Obviously, before stupid Brexit, uh, you'd just pay five nine nine five, and then we'd just ship them. Uh, but now it just gets taken off this end and then added on that mm-hmm. end. So, there's, so it's not re- so that so it doesn't really solve the VAT thingy. Um, but we might look to have a European manufacturer um, or assembler um, just to make the shipping a little bit faster and cheaper mm. for European customers, although at the moment... I mean, I mean no, if- in terms of fast, I mean, so anywhere in Europe at the moment, if I hit go, they will arrive the next day. Yeah. It will be one day to Europe. Having said that, the... I, I don't know if it would be any quicker because it would still be next day delivery I, in Europe. I, I ordered some Hypex amps on Wednesday and uh, they should have arrived. They're in the country. They should have arrived on Friday, but it was with UPS, mm. and UPS is shit, and didn't deliver them on Friday, <laughs> yes. but we'll be delivering them yes, on Monday. Yes, if there's one company we're absolutely um, not using to send speakers, it's UPS. Yeah. Um, and Peter says, yeah, if you're a company, the VAT is deductible anyway. It is. is. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, only if you're VAT registered, though. So not all companies are. Um, but yeah. Uh, anything else to cover? Mum-shaped? Uh, uh, yep, yeah, Koss is saying about the again ATC sound better than the A77s and even the S3V. Well, we had the S5V from Adam S3H. We had S3H. Yep, and the SEM45s in the studio at the same time, mm-hmm. and the SEM45s absolutely blew the living shit out of the Adams. So, interestingly, Um, when people say that you can hear DSP, and we were saying that you can't hear it in ours, that was one thing that you noticed, was you could hear some kind of number crunching on the Adams. On the Adams also, if there was a huge difference. So the Adams sounded a lot better when I went in on AES. Um, The conversion wasn't very good in the Adams. And if you went in on analog, you could hear it. Everything flattened quite a lot, and it just sounded a bit processy. Whereas Mm. when I went in on AES... That was a noticeable jump up because you're missing that stage of yep. of conversion. Um, and again, it comes down to price. So the conversion in the Adams is the Adams sell for however much they sell for, or whatever. Know. Say it's five grand a pair. Um, you've got the retail and the distribution, and the, you've got all the different markups mm-hmm. in that. So you spend five grand on a pair of speakers, you're actually getting a pair of speakers that probably cost four hundred <laughs> to, to to make. Um, that's that's you know that's just the that's just the, sure. way, the way it works. Uh, so four quick things to address: Diamond Domes. What about it? So we covered this a little earlier, but uh, basically things are happening in Diamond World. Um, just broad details because we can't elaborate too much. We're still working on it, but Diamond Mids, Diamond Tweeters are going to happen, uh, and that will happen pretty soon. Um, we're we're just going to be kind of. DSPing and working out the best options and what it should cost and that kind of thing. But yes, uh, if you haven't already, you can sign up to our email list. Never any spam, none of that bollocks. Uh, but <laughs> basically, you can sign up and either our Discord or email list are always the places where we shout about <coughs> new things first. Um, you mean there's not? A, is there a free thing that tries to sell you a paid thing? No, oh. there is not. 
so presentdayproduction.com slash sign up or slash discord for the email or discord um, and yeah we'll, we'll, we'll tell you all about the diamond uh, mums as soon as they are available again yes. don't have a clue what it's going to cost yet we still need to work all that out but it's going to happen uh, and following on from that the uh miliana said what's the progress on the mum 10s now we've been told the production quantity of the ptt 10 woofer will be around summertime so that will likely be the earliest that anything's going to happen with a mum 10 um but we would like to get them out as soon as possible so we're kind of working out designs in the meantime because you can do a lot without physically having the drivers you can work out on paper what goes where and yeah sizes and stuff which we've kind of largely done Um, um but yeah so the mum 10 is definitely going to happen uh, it's just a case of when we get woofers from Purify um, because they were just finalizing a few uh, design bits to make sure that they're as perfect as they can be. Uh, and then it will be the same with subs. Like we said, there's going to be a 6, 8, and 10 sub uh, coming at some point in the near future. So that will all happen. Uh, Victor Nova said, Who has been purchasing the mums? Mastering engineers, producers? The answer is a bit of everything. All of the above. Yeah, yeah, we've had mixing engineers, tracking engineers, mastering engineers. We've had someone buy them for their living room. Uh, more than one person, actually, yeah, buy them for, a couple for of the people. living room. Um, there is, yeah, I mean, there's pretty much every type of person. Um, you know, we're, we're not picky. If you want a good pair of speakers, that doesn't matter what you do, we will give you a good pair of speakers. Um, yeah, and... Reassure said, gosh, I wish I didn't visit your website as now I'm going to be dreaming about speakers. <laughs> Welcome to my life. All I've thought about for the last two weeks in bed is mum eights. It's been driving me nuts. Yep. Um, and the Legally Blind Jedi says, so what you're saying is, and this is quite a bold claim, your two-way sounds even better than three ways of a similar price. Absolutely, categorically, yes. And we've heard a lot. I'm not going to name any names, but there's a there's 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 a brand that's very of a similar price ilk to adams um and yes they are far better Mm -hmm. and that's and most of that is down to the quality of the components in them sure uh and talking of quality of components ic sasaki said uh best way to connect the mums aes or analog now this can depend entirely on what setup you've already got because the conversion difference between aes and analog in the mums is minuscule yep because they've got good conversion. Um, because the conversion is than, great. Rather than cheap ones. Um, so really, it doesn't actually matter. We run AES for convenience. It's a stereo format, so one cable will connect two speakers. You can just link them. Um, but again, absolutely no complaints running them on analog. The only difference is on the analog, it can tend to be about 5 dB or so quieter in terms of gain. So you just need a bit more gain in your system to... Yeah, and the disadvantage with AES can be that digital can be very difficult and very lossy to attenuate, so you need to make sure that whatever you're using to turn it down is doing a very good job Mm -hmm. of that and not a very poor job and at at lower volumes you're you're missing quality. Um, So in our case, it's the... uh, Well, we're actually using the the Audion Aurea Mm -hmm. now, and that's you turn it down all the way, and it just sounds exactly the same as when you For turn sure. it all the way up, but quieter. Uh, so they've nailed the. the mm. uh, again, that's that's under digital control. Um, and before that, we were using the Trinov for yeah the volume control. And yeah. I recently found out why that is so good at being lossless, and it's because it uses sixty four bit audio. Mm. So one up from thirty two is something like. I think it was something like 32,000 dB of headroom. And it was basically like that's, you could destroy the entire universe and it wouldn't be that loud. That's enough. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a, a good attenuation choice. Do you have plans for any Mum 15 line, li, live line array rig for us live noise boys? Do you know what? I would absolutely love, Mark thinks I'm an idiot for this, but I would love to make some kind of line array thing for live because I like big, loud, sexy sound systems. But the problem is the technology that goes into those kind of systems is way above where we're at at the moment. We would need a team of nerds working on this, making all the computery DSP things. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's not something I'm yeah. keen on. Um, but something I am keen on, um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce your name uh, because I will make a terrible hash of it. Uh, have you considered dual concentric speakers to make a smaller monitor for surround setups? Yes, um, but, and but. there is a but, uh, the problem with a smaller monitor for surround setups is that it needs to be a cheaper <laughs> monitor 
for surround setups and to compete with the Callies and the sure. the, 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 the KRKs and the, everyone else um, doing cheap monitors is you need to outsource the manufacturing to the Far East, and that's not something we're even considering doing at the moment. Um, we have made a smaller surround model which you can probably see you're now even more in the way behind me there <laughs> i've gone the wrong way yeah you've gone the wrong way that's, there that's we go the, the little gray one it's a, that that little three-way one there which isn't a dual concentric it's a traditional sort of three-way yeah um and that can come in a bit cheaper if we can find an alternative amplifier solution that's cheaper but an alternative amplifier solution that's cheaper means it isn't as good um mm. and then you know what's the point Sure. It's so, so it's something that's still in development and we're still kind of it's, working Yeah, it's there. something we think because we'd like to offer a, a lower priced option for Atmos. Sure. Um, I think the way to do that is to hook up with another manufacturer and sort of co-develop something and use their manufacturing prowess. That's that's something we sure. could maybe look at further down the line. Um, but, it, you know, what we're making here at the moment is basically a bespoke product. We're making all of them by mm, hand. For sure. Um, and uh, that makes things quite expensive but we bring the price down by knocking out distribution and retail not by going cheap with the sure. with the components uh Sakura said will you sell the sixes with a diamond option now at the moment the mum six is available in silk only but it will be available in beryllium and as soon as we get the diamonds available i don't see why not it would make sense to do that um but it's gonna die. It will, it will double than, the price. It will more than double because the, the price. problem is we will be paying three grand a pair for the diamond tweeters. They are not cheap at all. So basically, a pair of these tweeters costs exactly the same as a full set of mum eight, uh, mum sixes. <laughs> so yeah, so you'd you know, probably if, be better off going with beryllium mum eights I'd, rather than yeah. I personally think that it would be so expensive that the sound quality of a diamond mum six would be equal tier to probably either a beryllium or maybe even a silk mum eight because you've got that added mid driver for that extra 10 to 15% as it is. And then obviously material differences. I reckon it would probably match like a beryllium mum eight and it would probably yeah, cost the same. So <laughs> yeah, I think there'd be a bit of a disparity between the mids and the, yeah. um, and the, um, and the highs, but hey, ho. But, you know, we'll experiment. We'll have some... We've already got diamond tweeters in the building, so we can have a play with it and yeah, see what exactly. happens. Yeah, and, experiment with different you know, things. So the brilliant ones will come first because, you know, we have more of them. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just kind of go from there and see what happens um, because we like experimenting, don't we, Mark? We do. When um, we've got time. Yes. Uh, ben said, when are we releasing a PDP-only fans? No human on the planet wants to see that. Uh, if it was only flops where it was just pictures of the cat, I would want to see that. But otherwise, no. <laughs> there we go. Damn, uh, I've already got all the content for it as well. Oh, God, I don't want to know. <laughs> Damn. Scarred for life. Right, time wasted. Uh, DMB Audio Technic is the best line array I've ever heard. Now, I'd be interested to know, do you think that most line arrays have a smiley face sound? Because me and Mark do. Every time we've heard line arrays, it's always like tons of like crispy treble, sometimes horrible treble and then tons of, like, 20 hertz and nothing in the middle. It's to always me, it's no a, mid. To me, they all. sound like bigger, you know, the Bose sticks. Mm. Thing. It, it, it's it's mm. always lots of lots and lots of small drivers and then massive subs, and to me, there's always a bit of a hole in the middle. Mm. Um, For sure. But then, you know, the venue comes comes into play. And there are so many variables, and that's why there's so much happens. technology in these line array yeah. systems, I mean, because there's so many variables involved. Yeah, I mean, live sound, if you compare... If, so if, if you um, if you compare how it sounded when I was 18 and going out and going yeah, to gigs and stuff like that... Crispy old JBLs or something. It's moved on massively. Yeah. Um, but, the, you know, you've still got venues like the Royal Opera House. Uh, Ronnie Scott still use ATC... Mm. Um, mm. they did a version of the SEM 150 for PA use back in the 90s, I think. And you go to Ronnie Scott's and they're still they're still using lots of those sure. rather than a, a line array. Um, so, mm. so, yeah, Mystic says, I hate line arrays. It's just about coverage and nothing else. And, yeah, I think, mm. yeah, I think you're right. And that's the downside of a venue. I think venues should just out, like the O2. <laughs> if you go to the O2, they should just hand out 18,000 pairs of headphones. Mm. It would sound in. better, to be fair. Would, yeah. That, that it would, would sound be better. better. 
Um, right, let's do a couple more questions and then we'll kind of begin to wrap it up. So okay. Trevor Noakes said, and we did cover this earlier, but we'll just quickly cover it again. In the future, would you offer a trade up option for existing customers? So if, for example, you wanted to upgrade your mum sixes to mum eights, we are not against the idea yes. and we, we can do that. Absolutely. Um, at the moment, there's no kind of framework in place for that because the mum sixes have only just started shipping. But yes, we're not against the idea. Um, so that can happen. Uh, Legally Blind Jedi said, have you looked into graphene tweeters? I've, I read that as giraffe. Have we looked at giraffe <laughs> have tweeters? Have you looked into giraffe um, tweeters at so all? So Bleasmart offer something like six different materials between the mid and the tweeter. They're not all available on both, but you've got silk, a beryllium, diamond, Textream, which is a new one, which we haven't yet heard. Yeah, which is only available I've, as a mid. Yeah, but I've been told that's in the middle of silk and beryllium, so yeah. I'm not really sure if there's a benefit for that. Aluminium, magnesium alloy, and paper, which is mid only as yeah. well. Um, I'm fairly and, sure Stanislav said he did look into graphene. Graphene, he did uh, when we had the video call with him last year, and it wasn't as good as beryllium. Mm. I mean, I, I don't think I there would be much point for us going for it. So at the moment, it's silk, beryllium, and upcoming diamond, and that's it for now. But you yeah. know, we'll experiment. We'll see what happens and. And the reason we haven't used aluminium, magnesium is because they're very coloured, so they're different, definitely. Uh, they're designed to emphasise transients and stuff like that and not give an accurate portrayal of them. Again, with the paper, um, the paper mid-dome gives a very mm-hmm. sort of smooth sound that, that does the opposite. So great for hi-fi use if you want. If you, um, I know Stanislav himself said he likes listening to a lot of super crushed 70s rock music. Sure. So he's got it's aluminium, magnesium drivers in his speakers because they help bring the transients out. Mm. Um, but obviously for mixing and studio work, at the moment the gold standard is the beryllium. Um, sure. And I'm sure the gold standard will be the diamond for sure. you've got the price of a house to yes. spend on your speakers. Cheapo Card Company said giraffe speakers offer next level sounds. Oh. Hey. He's always got something. <laughs> Absolute genius. Um, da, 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 da. What's the difference between silk and beryllium? Now, silk is your kind of general... I mean, we covered this earlier as well, but just quickly to go over it again in case you missed it. Silk is your kind of general all-round detail. Great for people who are tracking and you know a bit of mixing basically it's your kind of all-round swiss army knife uh driver beryllium i would say is better suited for people that are mixing and mastering exclusively because it's probably a bit distracting if you're tracking you'll spend forever just adjusting things but again that can be a good thing if you know what you're doing exactly so it's very much personal preference the actual definitive answer is silk is a good all rounder. beryllium has a bit more detail slightly better transients and better 3d depth um both of us prefer the beryllium and the customers that we have already who have heard both prefer the beryllium it's a, it is all round a better option um but obviously it's more expensive as well it's about 1500 pounds more expensive so budgetary considerations and kind of your workflow as well can influence that uh noah said can you do a main monitor with 15 inch bass drivers no. do you know what Yes. No. I, yes. So I would love, I love speakers with a big chonky bass end, right? Mark hates them, and which is why I've got the ATCs, which don't even work anymore. <laughs> and I, I love the sound of a big bass driver. I'm obsessed with the idea of getting dual 18 subs in here. I love the idea. We've got dual 15s at the moment. But the problem is the bigger the bass driver you go, the heavier it gets. And at the moment, it also seems to add more distortion as well because Purify don't make these big drivers and we love the Purify woofers. The biggest they make at the moment or in the near future is the 10. So no 12s even. But if they made a 12, I'd quite like to try that. Um, But the problem is if we go to bigger drivers, you're going to be compromising that bass quality because you're going to get slower transients as the driver is heavier. Uh, And (laughs) I just don't really see the point, to be honest. I mean... I don't know. What do you think? Going back to the ACC thing again, there's lots of people that love SCM 50s and hate SCM 150s or SCM mm. 200s or SCM 300s, and I totally understand why. Uh, they're more expensive, so they should be better. But the bigger the bass driver gets, you get you can tend to get a bit of a hole in the actual bass as opposed to the the more sub bass. Now that's not necessarily the case with ATC because they're 
tonally across the range they're fantastic they you just get slightly lower extension with the biggest biggest ones and greater spl um but we tried making a mum 12 with we a did. very very well engineered 12 inch bass driver um yeah. and the bleesma mid and the bleesma tweeter and i don't even think we gave it a day you before, didn't give it a day. Before I went, this is a complete waste of time because super lows smack you in the chest. Yep, yeah, great. Big hole. Uh, uh, not a big hole, but I wasn't hearing the detail from 100 to 300. This is why we're a good team because we completely disagree on loads of stuff. So I think there was loads of potential in that speaker. The problem is I had one afternoon to DSP it. Not even one afternoon. I had three hours and then Mark was like, no, this is shit. We're throwing this away. Yeah, there just wasn't the transient detail. You in cannot the DSP a speaker in three hours. Doesn't happen. No, but you can get pretty close when you trim of it. Yeah, but I think if we had more time and obviously a better design, maybe the cabinet design was wrong as well. I think if we had more time, we could get close. But I do agree that it wouldn't stand up to the quality of a smaller purify woofer. Yeah. So you know, so for no. now, probably not purely because the woofers aren't as good as you go bigger. There are good options, but mm, they don't yeah. match what we currently have, and we're really happy with that. Uh, Andrew said, thank you, gentlemen. Huge fan. Your work ethic is inspiring in itself, let alone the generosity of both your insight and knowledge. Thank you, Andrew. That is very kind. Thank and you. we thank you for watching our live streams and the occasional video that we put out. Mark Clayton says, lots of highs, lots of lows. Must be bows. Yeah, mm. that was kind of... <laughs> yeah, big smiley face. That exactly. That was kind of what was the thing. Yes, right. I think we should call it an evening. We've been waffling on for an hour and 45 already. What? This has flown by. That's the thing. Mark doesn't have a clock anywhere, so he'll just waffle forever. And to be honest, I've been quite enjoying waffling as well. This has been a really fun live stream. It and has. Yeah, thanks I've for... actually really enjoyed all the questions we've been getting through. There yeah, have been some very questions insightful and, questions. And comments, which is good. If you haven't read the Sound on Sound review so far, it is free. On their website, links in the description to the video we put out on Thursday. But just in fact, I'll put it in the video now just as well. Go- just Google it in the live or stream. something. But if you can, if you have the opportunity to, then please either buy the PDF from the website or go and buy a physical copy mm. of the magazine because these guys deserve the support um, and you know the, the the income they earn from subscriptions for and sure. People because they're they're forty years old next year. Wow exciting which is bonkers that is bonkers that's older than me just doing the maths yes 40 years old 1985 was issue one wow Um, that's crazy which i remember buying when i was 13 Mm. um yeah blimey so Um, you can yes so you can access the i've just put the link to the review in the chat so if you click on that you can have a nice little read about the mumsies and uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful. If anyone wanted to get in touch, there was a few people in the, in the comments saying they had a few more questions. Email us, info at presentdayproduction.com and either me or Mark will sit up until two in the morning answering your emails. More than likely me, <laughs> yeah, because I'm just I'll, obsessed with answering yeah, emails. Because I'll be in a couple of hours later. Um, and Around the clock, pretty much. Yeah, there we go. Oh, uh, Cos Billingham said, take five minutes to be proud of yourself on this one. You really do deserve to wallow in a bit of smugness this time. <laughs> no, Thank there's no, no, time, no time for there smugness. When he, no time for to, wallowing. Um, things to yeah, do. There we go. Yeah, Round thanks for everyone for that's camp. tuned in. Um, hi, Sam, both Sams. Sam Arrington's just tuned in. Hello. Hey. Um, and Hello. I know Sam, our, our Sam, is watching us from, well, he was watching us from home. He's probably given up now. And He's out gallivanting and again. who would blame him? Yep, don't blame him at all. Um, yep. Cool. So, right, thank you everybody for watching and for you will in. see us next week on a live stream that we have not yet planned. I think it Or might have we? Be... I can't remember. I was talking was really I was exciting. talking to Sam about it earlier and I can't remember what <laughs> what we were talking about. I'm sure it will work it out, you know. We'll get there. Or have a week off. Cool. Uh, and in celebration of us getting a good review, I'm going to put up the QR code lasagna. You can scan that, you can find out about some speakers. Uh, the good old lasagna. Right. Th- thanks. Thank you, everybody, for watching this live stream. Thanks, Jackie. Happy birthday. Yes, it was my nan's Wait, birthday. Waving sideways. Happy birthday to my nan. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful evening or afternoon wherever you are. And you'll see us next week. Which which camera are we waving at? The six K. Oh, hello! I can't see go. the tally light on that one.
No, it doesn't have volume because I'm not plugged in. Ah. Uh-huh. 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 Right, goodbye, everyone. See you later. See you next week. Goodbye. Bye.